This is the horn sound of a passing car. Sounds familiar? The horn's pitch changed. Actually, the horn's original pitch did not change. It is the motion of the horn relative to the listener that caused the perceived pitch to change. This is called the Doppler effect. I have a tuner here. I'm going to tie it on a string and whirl it around in a big circle. And I want you to listen for pitch change when it goes around. Did you hear the pitch shifted higher when the tuner moved towards you? Did you hear the pitch shifted lower when the tuner moved away from you? Let me play that part again. Doppler effect happens when the wave source moves toward or away from the observer or when the observer moves toward or away from the wave source. Or we can have both the wave source and the observer moving at the same time. As long as the two are getting closer, the perceived frequency will be shifted higher than the source frequency. As long as the two are getting farther away from each other, the perceived frequency will be lower than the source frequency. That's why the horn sound of a passing car is like this. At first, the car approaches the observer, so the pitch shifts higher. Then suddenly, the car travels away from the observer, so the pitch shifts lower. So, Note that the entire time, the driver of the car would hear the horn in its original frequency, because there is no relative motion between the driver and the horn. You probably have heard of Doppler radar before. Doppler radars are used in meteorology, police speed guns, etc. It works by sending out a radio wave and detecting its reflection. When the radio wave hits an obstacle at rest, the reflected wave's frequency stays the same. However, if the obstacle is moving, the reflected wave's frequency would change due to Doppler effect or Doppler shift. Using the frequency shift of the reflected wave, one can calculate the velocity of the obstacle. Doppler effect happens to different kinds of waves, but we probably hear about it mostly for sound and light waves. Now let's take a look at how Doppler effect happens. This one shows the wave fronts produced by a stationary wave source. This one shows the wave fronts produced by a wave source moving to the right. In this case, the wave source is moving at 70% of the wave speed. So if the wave fronts look like these, what can you say about the motion of the wave source? The source is stationary, so the wavelength of the wave is the same in all directions around the source. How about these two? What can you say about the motion of these wave sources? Both of these wave sources are moving to the right. And which source moves faster? The one on the right moves faster. That's why the circular wave fronts shift to the right more than they do in this figure. If you are an observer on this side, you would observe a wavelength that is shorter than the original wavelength. If you are an observer on that side, you would observe a wavelength that is longer than the original wavelength. And the faster the source moves, the more the perceived wavelength changes, and therefore, the more the perceived or observed frequency shifts. Because in all these cases, the waves travel in the same medium, the wave speed would be the same for all. And the speed equals to frequency times the wavelength. If the wavelength shifts shorter, the frequency has to shift higher in order to keep the speed the same. If the wavelength shifts longer, the frequency will have to shift lower. 
So if the wave source moves toward you, you would observe a frequency that is higher than the original frequency. If the wave source moves away from you, you would observe a frequency that is lower than its original frequency. Doppler effect also happens when the observer moves relative to the wave source. Let's look at these wave fronts produced by a stationary wave source. Suppose the source has a frequency of 100 Hz, which means it produces 100 wave fronts every second. An observer standing over here would have 100 wave fronts passing him every second. However, if the observer moves toward the wave source, he will have more than 100 wave fronts passing him every second, making his observed frequency higher than 100 Hz. On the other hand, if the observer moves away from the source, he will have fewer than 100 wave fronts passing him every second, making his observed frequency lower than 100 Hz. So if you move toward a wave source, you would observe a frequency that is higher than the original frequency. If you move away from the wave source, you would observe a frequency that is lower than the original frequency.